There are lot of similarities in between motion along a straight line and rotational motion about a fixed axis. In case of a motion along a straight line, a car can move in two direction, the positive direction and negative direction. Similar to that in rotational motion about a fixed axis, an object can rotate in counterclockwise direction which is known as positive direction or it can rotate in clockwise direction or you can say negative direction. The direction of physical quantities related to rotational motion is along the axis of rotation and this direction is given by right hand thumb rule. Now let's check out the different variable quantities related to these motions. In case of motion along a straight line, we have seen in equations of motion there are five variables. The initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, displacement and time. Similar to that, in case of rotational motion about fixed axis, there are five different variable quantities. The initial angular velocity, omega zero, which is measured in radians per second. Similar to that, final angular velocity, then angular acceleration, measured in radians per second square. Angular displacement, theta, measured in radians. And finally, the time, t in seconds. Out of these five variables, four are vector quantities. Now let's check out the kinematic equations of motion for uniform motion. What is uniform motion? In case of linear motion, uniform motion means motion with a constant velocity. Constant velocity means motion along a straight line in a particular direction. And we say that uniform linear motion. In case of rotational motion, we talk about the uniform angular motion. Uniform angular motion means motion with constant angular velocity, omega. So in case of rotational motion, the displacement, the angular displacement is given by theta equal to omega t. Angular velocity is given by the rate of change of angular displacement with time. Now let's check out the kinematic equations for constant acceleration motion. In case of linear motion with constant acceleration, we have seen there are five different kinematic equations. Similarly, in case of rotational motion with constant angular acceleration, there are five equations. The first one gives the final angular velocity relation with initial angular velocity, angular acceleration and time. Next equation is angular displacement, which is equal to the average angular velocity multiplied by time. There are another formula for angular displacement similar to the linear displacement. And the next equation relates the final angular velocity with its initial angular velocity, angular acceleration and angular displacement. And finally, the angular displacement, one more equation which is in the form of omega f, t and alpha. Now one important thing here, in case of rotational motion, the angular displacement theta can be measured in radians, degrees or revolutions. So we must know the relation between radians, degrees and number of revolutions. Now let's check out one special case of rotational motion when object start from rest. It means the initial angular velocity is zero. In this case, your all five equations reduce to this form and this you can get by putting the omega zero equal to zero. Now let's check out some numerical problems based on kinematic equations of motion for rotational motion. The example number one here, a disk speeds up from rest means from omega zero equal to zero at a constant rate of three radians per second square. So alpha is three radians per second square. Now we have to find out the final angular speed means omega f at after time 22 seconds. So t is equal to 22 seconds. 
So now for part A, we can find out the angular speed by using formula omega f equal to omega 0 plus alpha t. And since here alpha is in radian per second square and time in seconds, so we can put directly these values 0 plus 3 into 22 and this becomes 66 radians per second. So this, that is the answer for the first part. Now let's check out the part B. How many revolutions will this go through the during this time period? So here we need to find out theta in revolutions, okay, not in radians. So basically whatever we get for theta in radians, later on we can convert into revolutions. So here we can use the equation omega f square equal to omega 0 square plus 2 alpha theta. By putting value here 66 into 66 equal to 0 plus 2 alpha is here 3 radians per second square 3 into theta. So theta equal to 66 into 66 divided by 6. So this will be in radians right now we have to convert this radians into revolutions so we know 2 pi radians is equal to 1 revolution right so value of theta in revolutions will be equal to if you solve this 11 so 66 into 11 divided by 2 pi and 2 pi pi value is 22 by 7 so we can write down this way and this will be equal to 3 times it gone so here this will be equal to 77 multiplied by 3 equal to 231 divided by 2 and this will give you 115.5 revolutions. So this is the answer for part B. Example number 2. The angular displacement theta of a flywheel varies with time by given relation. So here theta is 2t plus 3t square. What is the angular acceleration as t equal to 2 second means the angular acceleration alpha value we have to find out at the instant of time when t is equal to 2 second. Angular acceleration is the rate of change of angular velocity with respect to time and omega is nothing but the rate of change of theta with time. So we have to differentiate this equation two times. So let's find out omega first. So omega is d theta by dt. That means if you differentiate plus 3t square and this will be equal to 2 plus 6t. Now if we again differentiate this we will get alpha which is d omega by dt and this will be equal to if you differentiate this expression 2 plus 6t so differentiation of 2 which is constant with respect to time will be 0 so 0 plus 6 so this will be equal to 6 a constant well since in this case the angular acceleration is 6 radians per second square which is a constant at any instant of time this acceleration the angular acceleration will remain the same so at t is equal to 2 second the acceleration will be 6 radians per second square. The problem number 3. The motor of an engine is rotating about its axis with a angular velocity of 100 rpm. So here the angular velocity omega 0, the initial angular velocity is 100 rpm, rounds per minute. It comes to rest after being switched off in 15 seconds. So t is equal to 15 seconds and its final velocity is 0. Now assuming constant angular deacceleration means alpha is constant that means that we can use the constant angular acceleration equations for rotational motion. Now we have to find out the number of revolutions made by its before coming to rest. So basically we need to find out the theta in form of number of revolutions. Now here you see the angular velocity is given in rounds per minute and time is given in 15 seconds. So if we use the angular velocity in rounds per minute, we need to change the time 
in minutes as well to keep the consistency in unit of measures okay or in other way we can change this rounds per minute in rounds per second and we can keep the time in seconds as of now let's convert time in minutes so t can be written as 15 divided by 60 which is equal to 1 by 4 minutes okay and we will use the angular velocity in rounds per minute only so that we can get the displacement theta in rounds or number of revolutions directly from the motion equations. So to find out the theta we have equations theta equal to omega 0 t plus half alpha t square. This is one equation. Here we don't know the alpha so we have unknown here. There is another formula which is Final angular velocity square equal to W0 square plus 2 alpha theta. Here again, we don't know alpha. Okay. So anyway, whatever equation we use to find out the theta, we need to find out alpha first. So here alpha we can find out from the equation WF equal to W0 plus alpha t. So final angular velocity is 0. This is equal to W0 is 100 rpm plus alpha multiplied by time which is 1 by 4 minute. So this gives you alpha equal to minus 400 revolutions per minute square. Now let's put the values in this equation. So this will give you the angular displacement equal to omega 0 is 100, time is 1 by 4 plus half alpha is minus 400 and t square is nothing but 1 by 16. So this will become 25 minus 200 divided by 16. So you can cancel out 8 to the 16, 8 if I say 25, this will become 25 by 2 is 12.5. So this will be equal to 25 minus 12.5 equal to 12.5 revolutions. So the other way which you can do is you can convert this rounds per minute in rounds per second and keep the time as a 15 second. Okay, you will get the same answer. Try this and check it out. Now it is a time for question for you. A wheel rotates with constant angular velocity of 300 rpm rounds per minute. Find the angle through which the wheel rotates in one second. Put your answers and suggestions in comment box. I hope you would have enjoyed today's session. If you think you have learned something new today, then please click like button and subscribe us for similar type of videos. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye. There are